And uh, let's take a look. I won't open it here. Let's go open it on the other bench. All right, what we have here is the TBPS one wa blah, 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 made in Vietnam, but oh, lovely little box that comes in. EMC probe set. These are going to be uh, near field probes. Let's have a look. Woohoo! Look at that. Doesn't that look beautiful? Well, we've got ourselves uh, various um, size near field probes. They'd be, uh, they'd be the uh, H field. They'd be the magnetic ones. And it's probably, I assume, that we'd have an E field one as well or they might all be h field have to have a look anyway we've got ourselves a little uh wideband amp there it is three meg to three gig nice that'd be uh fairly linear so um you basically uh, well i'll explain and maybe demo this in a minute but it looks like we've got an smb connector on the end here and we uh, uh whack that over to the rf input and then we hook the rf output of course up to our spectrum analyzer and we can get uh, we can uh, do EMC pre-compliance with this sucker. There we go, we've got ourselves an adapter a cable for our spectrum analyzer and uh, a USB cable to power it. And let's have a look. We've also got a manual here, near field probes. Yeah, H and E field. Okay, so yes, the smaller one must be the uh, E field probe. Um, because there's two types of measurements you can do with these things. H field, which is uh, your magnetic field measurements and E field, E for electric of course, so you can do your electric field measurements and they're uh, basically two uh, separate tests and the reason you're going to get uh, different size, um, I assume that these are all your H field ones, the reason you get different size ones is that uh, you get better coupling with the big ones but with the smaller loop that'd be, so we'd have our loop around there, this one's smaller and this one's smaller again for the uh, magnetic uh, H field, you can pinpoint more easily exactly where your issue is with the uh, smaller one. So that's why you get a couple of those, whereas you don't need that with the uh, E field. Just the one will uh, do the trick. So these are designed for EM, EMC uh, pre-compliance. So basically uh, testing your own product in-house before you go and spend your thousands or tens of thousands of dollars to get it actually qualified at a proper EMC uh, test lab. And the interesting thing about these is that not only uh, can you use them to receive, pick up uh, magnetic fields in EMC, you can uh, use them to generate as well. So you can, you know, feed the signal. You can actually feed a signal and like sweep a frequency into here and you can generate uh, stuff. So if you've got yourself a PCB, it's just a random PCB lying around, then you can uh, actually generate a field in here and actually try and couple that into your product so you can test for uh, electromagnetic uh, conformity in that way that uh, external magnetic fields uh, at a certain frequency or as I said you can sweep it over a frequency don't uh, interfere with your product under test so they can be used for uh, sensing thing, uh, fields as well as generating them as well if you want to use them in the reverse direction. And these go for uh, under 400 bucks and gonna... you get a cow certificate with it as well and these are our four probes uh, yeah we've got our three H field probes so I assume H20 is like the 20 millimeter uh, diameter, 10 and 5. I'm assuming that's what those mean. So the three uh, H field uh, probes over the full uh, 3 gig frequency range or 300K actually, 300K to uh, 3 gig and our E field one as well. But if we have a look at the manual, we can probably find that the uh, E field is uh, different, yes. <laughs> First page, here we go. Um, this is what I'm talking about. So what your magnetic or H field probes are gonna give, they're gonna give an output power in DBM versus uh, frequency. So this is the uh, response for the different size ones. So there's a 20 millimeter one like that, which uh, drops off at about a gig there or thereabouts and uh, the various sizes. And then uh, for a given field of one micro Tesla. So if a known input field, uh, a known input magnetic field in uh, Teslas will give out a certain output power dBm versus frequency, whereas your E field probe, your electric field probe is basically entirely different because it's an electric field which is volts uh, specified in volts 
per meter. So once again, you'll have an output power here versus frequency for a known field, a fixed known input field of one volt per meter. But not only are they useful for uh, pieces like just bare PCBs like that to try to uh, check uh, traces and uh, you know and components and uh, all sorts of aspects of your PCB design, they can be used on final enclosures like this. So you can actually go around and find that okay, we got some leakage around these uh, you know these um, RCA. Uh, ports here or around our HDMI for example so you know but it's an art in its own right actually doing um, a proper EMC pre-compliance measurements and I could do you know there'd have to be hours and hours of instructional videos to actually you know to uh, to go through all the ins and outs of that but yeah these things are really very nice if you're developing products it's a really um, cheap uh, way to you know make sure you're at least in the ballpark before you go to um, your EMC uh, test house and you can spend, you know, uh, like time and money. Of course, time is money, so even more money uh, by going there. So you can make sure your design is, you know, have a good chance of success. But of course, you've got to understand the, uh, the various uh, standards and specifications and how to do the measurements and all that uh, sort of stuff. So um, maybe all that stuff is on the TechBox website. So with a cheap spectrum analyzer like this Rigol DSA815 and a near field uh, probe kit and the listen devices I've uh, put in a I've done a separate uh, video on also from uh, Techbox as well which I'll link in uh, down below for EMC uh, pre compliance I already have one uh, video on that but these are your uh, and you know for under 400 bucks to get one of these near field probe sets you can do complete EMC pre compliance for like well under 2 grand and that is like, trust me, that's unheard of. I mean, it cost an absolute fortune just, you know, five, just, you know, five or ten years ago. Um, you know, you had to have a real high-end spectrum analyzer, but now they're really cheap. And these have got, um, you can buy the uh, EM, EMC uh, pre-compliance plug-in uh, for this as well, which uh, helps you uh, more easily meet the standards and uh, stuff like that. But anyway, this won't be a proper video on EMC pre-compliance. Just playing around here to uh, see what we do. And I've got my E-field. Uh, probe in here and we can probe around and actually have a look at not a circuit but just the ca the interconnecting cables and the um, spectrum analyzer itself watch what happens if we put this over our cable here look at that we're picking up something at 900 megahertz there and you see it has to get very close this is what on, on the shield of the cable here this is why it's called a near field uh, probe because it has to be near to the product so um or near to the item that you're trying to test and right at the bnc um no, right usb down in there and at that headphone output jack whoa look we're sticking in that headphone jack it's really going off the off the scale and you know nothing's uh, uh, sort of escaping from our um, end connectors here or anything like that it's just fine but our uh, around the USB and everything here well there's something huge happening at 900 megahertz and then we can have a play around with uh, this HDMI board we were looking at uh, before and we can uh, probe over that I've got like the full span here and we're probably not going to see a huge amount Get over the crystal there. Yeah, there's something happening down at the low end, as you'd expect. So let's, I mean, this is over the full 1.5 gig. So let's go down to the low end and uh, see what's happening down there. If we probe our crystal again, bingo. Look, we've got a, uh, a peak there at uh, 36.85 uh, megahertz. That's not surprising because this is a 2.12.28 a, uh, megahertz. So, the, uh, so uh, one third of that uh, frequency. So we must be getting uh, a harmonic there. So expand that out. And here we go. We've got our fundamental here around our clock there that well our uh, crystal and that's at 12.2 uh, uh, well it's both it's marked 12.28 we're getting 12.23 uh, megahertz there near enough and uh, then we've got our one of our harmonics here at uh, 36 at a multiple of that of course three times that at uh, 36.96 megahertz so you can actually probe around uh, not only parts but you can follow traces and things like that and find any signals on your board uh, really quite neat, neat. and uh, you know it just lets you do and if you know what the standard is and you know that oh it's not oh, oh, I screwed up the layout on this and it wasn't supposed to emit there and you know all that sort of jazz then yeah you can find this stuff really easily with these sorts of near field probes 
Now the way you typically use these is that your e-field probes are basically for very close direct uh, contact here, which is why we're seeing nothing until we go like directly over the crystal there. So you can pin like uh, track down like maybe individual pins or individual traces on large scale stuff. It's harder on you know really fine surface mount stuff like this to uh, try and pick it up. Whereas your magnetic field, your H field uh, probes are designed to pick up your larger loop areas like your ground loop areas which is one of the big things for EMC compliance is that uh, you have to keep the golden rule of uh, PCB layouts keep your ground loop or your loop areas small so your and that means going from your power supply all the way out the loop area includes your uh, ground on here includes your ground system plus the uh, power wires to get there and any signal stuff so it's an entire you know where the current flows in the entire loop and that's where these um, H field or magnetic field pros pick up so we're picking up a lot more crap as you can see going around here with our H field pro we're not just picking up that individual crystal so we're picking up all sorts of all sorts of crud on here due to you know other clocks or other signals that are all looping around this board right back to the power supply so that's the difference between the h field probes and the e field electric probes and one of the things you can do too is you can use the uh, demodulation uh, functions on these a lot of the old uh, gray beards uh, do this they will um, uh, plug in some headphones here that's why it's got a headphone port so you can demodulate the signals and you can actually listen to it and you know all your all your gray beards will go around you know scanning the board listening in the headphones stroking their beard with their other hand with their third hand and uh, going yeah there's your problem and if you're still a bit confused over the H-field versus E-field thing, well, just remember what EMI is, what it stands for, Electromagnetic Interference, and, or EMC, Electromagnetic Conformity, Electromagnetic, there's electric fields and there's magnetic fields, and depending on whether you're near field, far field, whatever, or high voltage, low current, or uh, high current, low voltage, that kind of stuff, D that depends on which field is going to dominate and which you can actually measure. So generally speaking, at, uh, at high voltage, low current uh, stuff, the E field is going to dominate. So you're going to want to use an E field uh, probe, for example. But for high current um, stuff, then which is going to be, as I said, like, you know, loop area, big loop area on a PCB and, you know, as a chip just drawing, you know, huge gulps of current or something like that, generating big magnetic fields, then generally at, at a specific distance, the, uh, the H field, the magnetic field is going to dominate. So you're going to want to use a magnetic field. So there you go, just keep that in mind. EMI, electromagnetic. So thank you very much Techbox, this is an awesome uh, set, it's going to come in real handy in the lab, oh there it is down there, it's empty, um, but yeah, well worth the dollars if you're doing EMC pre-compliance, as I said, under two grand for uh, something like this, you can do it really well, I mean it might seem like, you know, a lot of money, but it saves you a ton of money, one of these things, and pretty essential if you're doing uh, product development, and it's also essential to get the uh, calibration uh, certificate with it as well, so you know the exact performance of this so because you're actually doing quantitative measurements here trying to at least see if you're going to get in the ballpark of passing your uh, standards so you know uh, you know you're also paying for the uh, for the calibration and uh, certification of these things so very handy I'll link in these uh, down below at uh, Techbox